Wetlands, like swamps and rivers, are the link between land and water and are some of the most productive ecosystems in the world. They have many important functions, like providing habitat for a wide variety of wildlife and plants, filtering, cleaning, and storing water, absorbing wind and tidal forces, and providing places of beauty and recreation. But that's not all. All kinds of freaky findings can be found in these bodies of water too, and we're about to show you some of the scariest, 15 most terrifying things found in rivers and swamps. Tekka Radioactive River The river flowing in this remote Russian town may look pristine, but there's a hidden danger that lurks within. Residents nearby are suffering from numerous diseases that doctors are attributing to a lifetime exposure to radiation in the area. Some 30 miles upstream from the crumbling village lies the infamous Mayak, a nuclear complex that's been responsible for at least two of the country's biggest radioactive accidents throughout history, environmentalists say, and the facility's decades-old records of using the Arctic-bound waters in the Tekka River. They would dump their waste from reprocessing spent nuclear fuel, the long-lasting results are still felt in every aching household along the river, where doctors still document rates of chromosomal abnormalities, birth defects, and cancers vastly higher than the Russian average across the board. Citizens such are left to suffer the government's failure to protect them for over four decades by not admitting the dangers they were posing to them. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. What they captured in a swamp shocked the whole world. A group of tourists was shocked when they were confronted with a family of troll monkeys playing music on the edge of an island in Thailand. They were spotted sheltering under the rocks, looking like the small orangey-brown Ewoks from Star Wars as the tourists passed by in a longboat and kayaks. Locals had warned the tour group to be wary of the island, saying that it was cursed by water spirits. The actual history of the area tells of marooned sailors and tribes of cannibals living around the islands so no wonder people were freaked out. Turns out, there was really no need to be afraid. The images captured are actually from a 2018 art project by a Norwegian artist for a contemporary art event. Inspired by the trolls of Norwegian folklore they grew up around, the creatures are actually just actors in costumes. Just like these viral images, the artist created their own fictional story behind the trolls too. Imagining them as furry creatures sitting on rocks, as if they were born out of the dripping tears of the mountain. And although at first glance we can see why the world was shocked to see something like this, there's no need to worry. It's just art. Comment below what you think about it and make sure to use the hashtag sweet topic. Sinking a house If you ever find yourself taking a stroll along the Loire, you'll eventually come to a bizarre sight. A house half submerged in its gushing waters. The structure sits slanted at an awkward angle, as it's casting a gloomy gaze at its damp surroundings. Though the house appears to be the subject of some catastrophic storm, but this construction was actually intentional. It's a replica of a famed hotel located in a nearby town of Louvain sur Loire. It was revealed as part of an art exhibition, which saw artists from around the globe arriving to fashion large-scale works inspired by the river and nearby estuary. The house was one of nine magnificent pieces to pop up in the local landscape. The artist who created the house in the Loire originally placed it in a another location. One fateful day, the furious river flooded and the strong current swept it off its foundation. It sailed down the river some great distance until it was eventually wedged into the earth. It started sinking thereafter. A few years back, the artwork was hauled 15 miles to where it resides today by a company that specializes in salvaging wrecks. The Car Wash This had all the ingredients to create an epic fail on this driver's part. We all should clean our cars from time to time. It keeps the car running longer if it's better maintained and looks better. This driver was so resistant to the notion of paying $3 for a car wash that he pulled off a silly stunt. To prove a point, he drove his Land Rover into the country, where a flowing river was low enough for him to get a free car wash. Unfortunately for him, while he was doing this, the dam gates opened and flooded the river with gushing water. His Land Rover was submerged in it. 
Instead of him paying $3, he was forced to pay for serious damages to the car, if not an entirely new one. As you might have imagined, this quickly went viral on social media, as other river visitors recorded most of the event. They couldn't believe their eyes when they saw a vehicle rolling down the river, and even more so, it was submerged. The man grabs his bag from the car and starts making the long trek back to the road on foot. That would be what's sometimes referred to as the epic fail walk of shame. There's a point where being frugal is just insanity, and it's safe to say that this person might have just reached that point with this stunt. <laughs> Iguana Invasion Florida is getting hit with yet another round of insane animal invasion. Haven't people gotten the picture that the state is being reclaimed by nature? While the state sure has a fondness for the exotic when it comes to animals, Florida is trying their best by banning certain types from breeding. They're in such a predicament today that the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has recently ruled that the breeding and dealing of 16 of the most ecologically damaging non-native species must be brought to a halt. The ban will apply to several types of python that have proliferated to crisis point in the Everglades, as well as many tegu lizards. And anacondas, Nile monitor lizards, and green iguanas. Green iguanas have thrived in Florida to such a degree that they're regarded as an environmental hazard. They can puncture seawalls, tear up sidewalks, and carry salmonella, to name a few. The commission also encourages Floridians to humanely kill the lizards if found. These monsters can grow to 5 feet and 17 pounds. They get into anything and anywhere, and that bodes major problems on a number of levels. For business, that affects their bottom lines. For restaurants, that spells health nightmares, and for regular pedestrians, it means their cars, yards, and homes are being destroyed. <laughs> the Real Planet of the Apes The original Planet of the Apes was released in 1979. The iconic series, starring Charlton Heston, had been adapted onto a small screen. Little did anyone know, even today, that far out in the remote jungles of Liberia, a New York nonprofit and fervent young scientist seeking to make a name for himself set in motion what would later become the real life Planet of the Apes. That nonprofit was the New York Blood Center, one of the largest blood banks in the United States. They were trying to develop a vaccine for a spree of blood related diseases that had emerged. The controversial laboratory conducted medical tests on over 100 chimpanzees, which also drew much criticism. The chimps were injected with various forms of hepatitis and a host of other diseases. Once they tested positive for one of the diseases, the animals were then transferred to one of six different islands. Since chimpanzees can't swim, they were the perfect natural prisons for these poor apes. Eventually, the lab encountered an obstacle it couldn't surpass, a worldwide growing resistance to animal testing, specifically in the U.S. Eventually, the anti-animal testing levels reached the breaking point, and the U.S. federal government and the National Institute of Health instituted a halt on breeding research chimps. <laughs> Abandoned Zoo if left abandoned for long enough, nature will assuredly swallow anything up, particularly of human creation. Such is the fate of this eerie abandoned zoo found just off US Route 6 in Connecticut. Today, people drive past every day without even knowing what it is. Cages and buildings just barely peek out from the overgrowth surrounding the road. The tiny zoo was once part of an 800-acre preserve called Shade Swamp Sanctuary. Before it, it was a wildlife rehabilitation center in the 30s. Injured animals were cared for and released back into the wild. It housed all manner of beasts, from birds, bears, reptiles, and many other animals. Known to a few as the Farmington Zoo, it also once hosted an effective breeding program for critters such as raccoons and rabbits that were commonly hunted off the highway during the Great Depression, and food was scarce. Shade Swamp's reputation spread, and soon people were bringing all manner of exotic pets they no longer wanted or could care for. We're talking monkeys, gators, and even a baby giraffe once. <coughs> Honey Island Swamp Monster there had to be at least one creepy creature on this list. Louisiana is chock full of swamps and animals that reside in them. However, there are also all sorts of legends of swamp monsters and other cryptids that date back hundreds of years, back to the Native Americans that first resided there. Just a short drive from New Orleans even are many acres of swamp land deep in the Honey Island Swamp that are said to be as uncorrupted, primitive, and untouched by humans. What resides there is a mystery. Could it be creatures of legend? 
It is for this very reason that many believe it's possible for a creature to live in these parts that never got noticed by humans. There are legends about pirates who supposedly pooled their buried treasure somewhere in these swamps, though that would make it touched by man. Other legends of ghosts of Native Americans still thrive. Many sightings of mysterious green lights flickering at night and strange sounds can be heard deep within. They even say the occurrence is to lead travelers into the wilderness where they never return. Nothing captured the attention of the public more than the legend of the Honey Island Swamp Monster. The first documented sighting of the creature took place in early August of 1963. A pair of experienced hunters claimed that while out in the swamps, they stumbled upon a gargantuan, terrifying creature standing over the body of a dead boar. The strange creature had ripped the boar's throat completely out. The hunters described the beast as being covered in dingy gray-white hair, with longer hair hanging from its head. The two estimated it had to weigh close to 400 pounds and stood about seven feet tall. The creature's massive size and hair was frightening enough, but the amber-colored eyes and horrible stench is what stuck the most in their nightmares. Garbage River Beirut, Lebanon has been in the middle of a trash crisis for quite some time, and it's only grown worse. We're nearing a very dangerous time for the residents of that city. A river of putrid garbage bags now snakes its way through the suburbs of Beirut, a surreal and unhygienic blight on Lebanon's cosmopolitan capital. It's eerily reminiscent of Disney's animated film, Wally's Planet, and the overflowing landfill now stretches for thousands of feet through Jediya, and is the direct consequence of the city's months-long garbage crisis. Residents are getting frustrated, claiming they can't even walk by some areas anymore because of the sight and smell. It used to be such a beautiful place. Locals are growing more concerned with the health issues. A solution was nearly in sight for selling the trash to Russia, but the company didn't file the paperwork on time and voided the contract, leaving them once again with a mess only getting worse. <laughs> Sloop Motor Humans are truly capable of amazing acts of ingenuity. A Dutch inventor and engineering student recently modified his motorcycle to run on methane, which he harvested from roadside bogs and ponds. Essentially, this means his bike runs on sewer gas. The aptly named Sloop Motor, which the inventor says was built to outlast any kind of future energy because shallow waters will always be there, he utilized a modified Honda GX160 motorcycle engine. According to the official website, he accomplished his task by drilling a hole into the engine's air box, allowing it to receive methane. He then attached a balloon to the hole, which feeds the engine with the collected methane as he drives over it. Sloot is the Dutch word for ditch. It wasn't built as a convenient alternative to electric or internal combustion motorcycles as it can't reach those high speeds. Instead, its point was to encourage people to reconsider their relationship with auto technologies. <laughs> Solomon's Castle. Weirdly right in the middle of a Florida swamp, shining in the sun, is a hand-built medieval castle that even comes with a moat. The sculptor, Howard Solomon, started construction back in 1974 and out of aluminum printing plates thrown out by the local newspaper. Years later, the ever-evolving, gleaming, now three-story tall castle covers a whopping 12,000 square feet, which includes a stunning courtyard filled with sculptures fashioned from discarded automotive parts. The one that stands out the most is certainly the 60-foot replica of a 16th century Portuguese galleon that serves as the moat restaurant. While the building itself captures the imagination of the child in its soul, it's the pun-filled tour once led by Solomon himself that's truly worth the time. He's currently trying to sell the castle with the steep listing price of two and a half million dollars. <laughs> The Celeste Illusion The opaque and glowing turquoise waters of Rio Celeste is arguably the most beautiful natural wonder in Costa Rica. With that being said, photographers are often accused of digitally altering their photos to make it look even more amazing than it is. But that's false. The color of the water is like something ripped straight from a fantasy world. There are many myths and hypotheses dating back to ancient times trying to explain this phenomenon, but recently has been mostly solved. Before the comprehensive study of the Rio Celeste by the University of Costa Rica revealed the answers, many believed that the water was fluorescent blue because of presence of certain bacteria and volcanic minerals. What they found was that it's actually an optical illusion. When they took samples of the Rio Celeste, the water appeared transparent in the lab. They also discovered that the water contained high levels of aluminum mixed with silicon and oxygen. 
larva mass. These crazy extraterrestrial-looking larvae are actually thousands of larvae moving together as one. The larva of a certain species of gnats has been known to migrate by gathering as one big snake-like shape whose numbers are uncountable. Scientists estimate some of the packs can get up to the tens and hundreds of thousands. The bizarre nature behavior is referred to as plin in Polish and hearworm in Germany, where they can most often be found slithering on the ground. The first mentions of the site date back to the 17th century, so scientists have ample time to get some good research about them but still have much to learn. For instance, they have yet to offer a complete explanation for how and why they do this, but according to the most recently available information, the movements of thousands of tiny larvae as a giant unit simply ensures a greater travel speed. They crawl over each other and it operates like a conveyor belt. Voodoo Cauldron Father-children fishing days typically involve poles, fish bait, and nice talks on a relaxing lake somewhere. For this family, fishing means pulling bizarre things from the water. The father-daughter duo started cleaning their local rivers in southeast Michigan using magnets and a grappling hook. The two started Motor City Magnet Fishers group called Fishing Missions with other magnet heads. Some of the finds they managed to discover are unreal, including this monstrous cauldron pot that was used for who knows what. Was it a witch's voodoo cauldron? Voodoo is a dramatized pop culture caricature of voodoo, an Afro-Caribbean religion originating from Haiti, though followers can be found in Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, Brazil, the United States, and around the globe. It has very little to do with the cliché artifacts you've seen in all the Hollywood movies or heard about in horror tales. Swamp Demons Eerie, elemental sculptures resembling half-human and half-vegetation are a striking sight in the swamp. They appear as disturbing, downright horrifying at first, but the demons here are no demons at all. The artists that build them intend to portray human nature, that's to say, both humanity and nature as separate entities, and unite them once more in a harrowingly alluring manner. It was meant to remind humans that while they see themselves as separate, they're one and the same, and we should be respectful to that and thus ourselves. Their motionless faces of dread are stained with sadness, and they observe the nature around them with an emotional lens of disparity. It's one of those things that's taken for granted until it's gone, and then the suffering begins. To the statues, the real human are the intruders, the danger, the descendants of those who have cast out their environment with such reckless disregard to the consequences. Then again, on the other hand, these statues are literally fashioned from materials found in the area and flow with the natural rhythm of plants and surroundings. The weather may deteriorate their muddy skin over time, but it does little to change their aura of odd balance. <laughs> Military Tank after 60 years of remaining submerged in a bog, this World War II German tank was pulled from the swamp. The iconic T-34 tank was captured by the Germans, repainted, and retrofitted for their own use. The T-34 itself was an element of Soviet Russian military and a critical role in the defense of Stalingrad and other Russian cities. It's theorized that the Germans used this tank, and then when the Russian was retaking the city, drove it into the lake to prevent it from being used once more by the advancing Soviet army. It eventually settled at the bottom beneath 12 feet of water and six more feet of peat and silt. Volunteers from a local diving club washed the tank and began restoration efforts. There was still 116 pieces of tank and munition inside, so it was capable of firing. After restoration was complete in 2007, it was taken to the War Museum in the village of Gordenko. Get this, they managed to start the diesel engine without needing any spare parts. There's a reason a tank is a tank. Rivers and swamps are vital parts of the world's climate but that doesn't mean they aren't home to some gnarly things. Whether it's a crazy weather pattern or monsters with glowing eyes lurking in the dark, swamps may forever sit in humans' hearts as a place of great mystery and sometimes feared. Since much of the acreage of swamps have never been explored, thanks to extreme dangers, it's entirely possible that some of the mysteries, if not all of them, could be true. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get all our lit content delivered right to your inbox.